In the olden days, photography used to be time consuming and expensive. Even if you had a camera, you had to buy film and then you can take your pictures, usually about 24, and then you'd have to go drop them off and wait for them to be developed to see how your pictures turned out. But with the advent of smartphones, most of us have a camera that we carry with us all the time. And today I'm gonna to share how your camera can be a great quilting tool. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So if you have a smartphone, you probably already use it in quilt making. There are a lot of apps and resources that you can use on your phone to help in your making process. But today I'm gonna to share five ways you can use the camera that's built right into your phone. The first way is to check light and dark balance in your fabrics. So in quilts, it's important to have a variety of light and dark fabrics, and that's what gives depth and interest to your piecing design. But sometimes it's difficult to decide what is a light and what's a medium and what's a dark. And this is where your camera comes in handy. If you take a picture of your fabrics and then in editing, you look at that picture in black and white, then it becomes obvious what is light, what's medium, and what is dark. This is especially helpful if you're making a scrappy quilt that has a lot of different colors and fabrics. The second way you can use your camera as a quilting tool is to double check the layout. When you're making a quilt, especially one that doesn't have an exact pattern, then often we will lay the pieces out on a table, a floor, design wall, and then we will get the arrangement that we like. Once we've decided on how we want to lay it out, then taking a quick picture will help us to remember the layout that we like and will give us a reference point that we can refer back to as we are assembling our pieces. It's easy for pieces to get rotated or flipped as we're assembling a bunch of blocks. So having a reference picture to refer back to is very helpful. And then when your top is finished, take another picture because sometimes it's easier to see in a picture if something is rotated or in a different orientation. If you want an extra level of checking, Take your picture and upload it in a quilting Facebook group and ask if anybody notices anything. Even if you miss it, somebody else is gonna say, hey, is that block supposed to be rotated? And then you'll be able to fix it. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has assembled a top, quilted it, and then been halfway through the binding before you realize that one block is rotated differently than you had originally planned. The third way you can use your phone is to remember your sewing machine settings. Sometimes when we're sewing, we change some of the settings on our sewing machine. You might move your needle to the right or the left to get a quarter inch seam allowance. You might change stitch lengths or you might use specialty stitches in your project. With a lot of machines, once you turn it off and then on again, everything goes back to the default settings and you might not remember exactly how your stitch is set. If you have a picture, then when you turn on your sewing machine, you can easily go back to the same settings that you have because you have a record and you can adjust your settings. Even on a small project, you'll be happy you did this if the power goes out. It only takes a second to do, but it can save you a lot of time and frustration. The third way you can use your phone as a quilting tool is to preview quilting designs. Once your quilt top is done and you've basted it, then you have a big decision about what quilting designs you wanna use and what is gonna work nicely with your top that you have. Well, this is a great opportunity to use your photo app. You can take a picture of your quilt top and most photo apps have a tool that you can mark up your picture by drawing lines on it. So drawing lines onto your picture of your quilt top will give you an idea of how that quilting design is gonna look. And you can even use this to compare multiple designs because you can duplicate your picture and draw a bunch of different quilting designs and then compare them all right on your phone. 
even though it's not exactly how your quilt's gonna look, it will give you a good idea of how it's gonna work. The fifth way you can use your camera as a quilting tool is to document your quilts. A lot of quilters give their quilts away, and this is a nice thing to do, but that can make it hard to remember over time what you've made, what fabric you use, what patterns you've used, and having a record will just make it easier. So taking pictures of your quilts is a great way to document what you've made. You can save them all in a folder, and then you'll have a reference to look back to, and you'll be able to share inspiration with other people who are looking for ways to use a particular pattern or fabric that you've used in the past. It's also nice to be able to look back and reminisce about all the beautiful things that you've made and see how much you've progressed as a quilter. So do you use your camera when you quilt? I would love to hear if you use it in any of these ways or in a different way. So drop me a comment so that I can learn from you. For more quilting tutorials and tips, you can check out my website, evidastudio.com.